This is the iPhone 13 mini, and I've been using it for four weeks now. I love so many things about this iPhone, and it's the iPhone that I've always wanted for a number of reasons. Why you ask? Hey, I'm Jerry, and Apple built a human-sized phone that a lot of people wanted. I waited four weeks on this mini review because I really wanted to spend a lot of time with it and solidify my opinions. Unfortunately, if the rumors are true, this will be the last human-sized phone. So let me tell you about using it over the last four weeks so you can decide if it makes sense for you. First off, check out this design. Like, it's really beautiful and very similar to last year's iPhones. The first thing that you're going to notice is this bright red color. And I freaking love this product red iPhone color. Apple messed up over the last couple of years with lighter or pinker shades, but this, this is the real product red. And no matter what some other guy on YouTube whose name rhymes with Jerry says, this is the best iPhone 13 color. I said in my unboxing video that I wanted to marry this color, so expect some invitations in the mail. On the front, we have that full screen display, which we'll get to in a moment. And on the back, we have that new dual camera system. The front and back glass are held together with this bright red aluminum bands that house the usual iPhone buttons, the mute switch, the speakers, the mics, and yes, the same old lightning port. Holding this iPhone 13 in my hand just feels good. I'm not tall and I don't have large hands, but this iPhone 13 mini just sits comfortably in my hand and I can spin it around like a little fidget device and generally feel pretty confident that I won't drop it. This iPhone is not too wide, which means I can type one-handed when needed and reach all the way across the keyboard with little effort, which is something I can't do with the regular size 13 or 13 Pro. This makes scrolling through Twitter or news or sending quick messages while standing in line super easy. I also said during the iPhone unboxing video that I wanted to use this iPhone 13 mini as my first phone without a case. I wanted to keep it as small as possible and to show it off without covering it with a case. I've been able to do that so far over these last few weeks, but although I love the idea of using this without a case, I actually find the experience of using it without a case worse for two reasons. First, depending on how dry your hands are, which for me changes throughout the day, it can be difficult to get a secure grip lifting the iPhone from the table. Sometimes it can be a little slippery, which means you have to squeeze just a little bit harder and sometimes it's slipped out of my hands and back onto the desk. Nothing to cause any damage, but it's just that little bit extra of brain and hand strain needed to pick up the iPhone from the table. Second, there's just an anxiety that goes along with using a naked multi-hundred dollar device. The idea of cracking the screen just sucks, and I wanna set it anywhere without worrying about rocks or something on the table that could scratch the phone. So, although it sounds like a good idea, it's time for me to slap a case on it. For now, I'm going to use this ESR hybrid case. ESR is not a sponsor for this video and I bought this case myself on Amazon. I like it because it shows off the beautiful product red color with the clear plastic back and it also has extra grip on the silicone sides. This case makes it really easy to pick up the phone off the table and it still slides in and out of pockets pretty easily. There's a link in the description if you wanna check it out and right now I guess you can save 10%. Okay, on to the display. This year, the iPhone 13 mini gets an even brighter display, matching the iPhone 12 Pro from last year. The regular peak brightness can now go up to 800 nits and up to 1200 nits with HDR, making it even easier to see when in bright rooms or outside. During my time with the iPhone 13 mini, I've had no issue seeing the screen in any lighting condition, even with sunglasses on. And with HDR, movies, videos, and even photos shot on the iPhone really pop. The display on the mini is limited to 60 Hertz, unlike the 120 Hertz ProMotion display on the iPhone 13 Pro. However, what I'm finding is that on smaller screens like the iPhones and even the iPad mini, the lack of ProMotion is really not an issue for me. When you compare the screens side by side, sure, you can see a difference, but in regular use of devices this size, I don't miss ProMotion at all. I usually scroll, read, then scroll, read. The brightness and clarity of the 5.4 inch retina display are very good and enough for what I need on a display this size. The notch at the top of the display has been slightly narrowed, but not enough to make any difference versus previous iPhones and doesn't add anything to the display. And Face ID seems to be no different than previous versions. It still unlocks at a reasonable speed and I find it to be extremely reliable in most situations. I know some people have issues with Face ID, so I have two quick tips. First, when scanning your face, Hold the iPhone about chest height 
where you'll usually be unlocking it, instead of parallel to your head. Second, scan it again using the alternate appearance option. That's kind of like adding another fingerprint with Touch ID. And let me know below if you've had any Face ID issues and if this helps. The speakers on the 13 mini are good. Most importantly, they are loud enough for most things and clear. The 13 Pro does get a little bit louder than the Mini and sounds a little bit fuller, but just because of physics and the size of the speakers in the Mini, they are slightly less vol voluminous, vol they're slightly less loud. I usually prefer to use AirPods when watching something, but I have no issues hearing a work call on speakerphone or listening to Spotify or watching a quick YouTube video or even listening to a podcast in the shower with the iPhone 13 Mini speakers. Yeah, I place my phone on a little tray in the shower and listen to podcasts. It's water resistant, why not? When it comes to performance, this year's iPhone 13 line gets the brand new A15 system on chip with six new cores and a four core GPU made up of 15 billion transistors. There's a new display engine, image signal processor, and new video encoders and decoders. But do you care about any of that? Probably not. Is this iPhone faster than previous iPhones? Yes, it is. I could show you some Geekbench numbers and they'll show between a 10 and 20% increase over last year's iPhone 12 line, or I could show you that in my LumaFusion export test, it shaves off about 50 seconds compared to last year's iPhone 12 Pro because of that new hardware video encoder. But I'm not going to, because I don't think it matters with the iPhone 13 mini. In regular use of the iPhone with built-in apps, work apps, social media, news, video watching messaging, and even games, there's absolutely no performance issues to speak of. Everything opens fast and gestures and swipes are smooth. Honestly, I wish I could find an app or a performance issue to extend out this portion of the video, but I can't, and that's a good thing. That means that the hardware in this iPhone should continue to perform for years, like how the five-year-old iPhone success is still supported today. You should have no performance issues or concerns throughout the life of this device. The cameras on the iPhone 13 mini are all new this year, and you can see those ginormous looking lenses on the back. Both the wide angle and ultra wide lenses are brighter this year, but the wide angle gets that sensor shift technology that was exclusive to the iPhone 12 Pro Max last year. That allows for an even better photo and video stabilization with less blur from movements. Now I don't spend a lot of time comparing photos side by side and I generally don't spend time editing them in Photos app or any other app, but I've been pretty happy overall with the photos and videos I've gotten from these cameras over the last few weeks. New software features for these cameras include photographic styles and cinematic mode. Now, let me first say that for anyone who wants to use these modes, they'll be pretty fun. I just don't think that they're for me. For photographic styles, you can set your preferences for photo contrast, vibrance, and warmth that applies to all the photos you take. This is different from a filter because it applies to all of the photos you take and uses AI to make sure that things like skin tone and skies are not adversely affected. I played with this and I actually like the default photo style, so I'll stick with that for now. There's also cinematic mode, which creates a focus and bokeh effect on video by intelligently deciding what to make in focus in the frame and adjust constantly depending on what's happening. You can go back and adjust this in the photos if the phone got it wrong. It's not perfect, but it's pretty cool. And I can see that with careful use, how this can be a fun tool to make some neat videos. Over time, I think that this will get much better but for now, you get a lot of blurred edges around what you're focusing on. For my use, I just don't think that I'll spend time to go back and edit these, and because they're limited to 1080p, I find that the overall video quality of the regular 4K videos for quick videos I shoot of my daughter and family is a better option for me. But overall for the cameras, they're a good update, and there are some fun new features that I know a lot of people will enjoy. And now, battery life. This was my single biggest obstacle to sticking with the iPhone 12 mini long-term. Much of what I love about the iPhone 13 mini was the same with the 12 mini. Actually, I should probably go out and check out that review again just to see how similar it was. But the iPhone 12 mini just gave me battery anxiety. Even though I spend most of my time at home these days, still, I don't like getting to the end of the day and running out of battery or running on fumes. Actually, if I was going into the office, I would have less battery anxiety because I would be plugged into CarPlay and charging both to and from work. But regardless, the battery in the iPhone 13 mini is better this year. Apple says that the 13 mini gets up to 17 hours of video playback versus the 15 hours in the 12 mini. And overall, I end the day with about 20 to 30% battery life and between three and a half to five hours of screen on time, which is comfortable for me. I do spend time on other devices during the day like the iPad mini or one of my other 19 devices, 
but for mobile devices, the iPhone still gets a majority of my screen time. As far as the price goes for the new iPhone mini, it starts at $699 for the base 128 gigabyte model, and you can bump it up to 256 gigabytes for $799 or 512 gigabytes for $999. I personally like to go for the 256 gigabyte storage on my iPhones. I find it's the sweet spot for holding some downloaded content and leaves plenty of room for photos and videos before they can get uploaded to Google Photos. Overall, I think that the iPhone 13 mini was the perfect upgrade for this year, and I love this device. The cameras are great, the screen is bright, and the battery gets me through typical days without issue. I don't miss the ProMotion on the 13 Pro, but I do kind of miss the macro and telephoto from the 13 Pro. Just not enough that I should say you need to get the Pro. For most people who want a human-sized phone, the Mini is the one to get. But if that's you, you need to hurry because it may not be around next year. Anyway, subs and thumbs, and I'll see you next time.